High five! Yes! <laughs> the oh, fucking King Ah! Oh, <laughs> yes! Get the fuck out of me! Cuphead, mate. I feel like we've waited as long as it would take us to make our own cups to play Cuphead. You did want a Cuphead prop, didn't you, mate? I did. I wanted a giant Cuphead for this one, but Cuphead! Everybody's seen it everywhere. We finally got a chance to play it, and we're going to make some deals with the devil. He's a bamboozler. He's, he's a bamboozler. He's not a nice man. These are kids. We're going back to the 30s. Ready? We have to do a jaunty 30s walk. Which way? Exit left. Select character. The devil took our souls. Well, not yet. No, not mate. Yet. He's not, not taken our souls. No, we not begged yet. and pleaded for him. He begged and pleaded because because of my fault. It was my fault. Wow. I got the greed in my eyes, my friend, at the casino table. We were having a good streak. Classic and you warned Cuphead, me. mate. You, you warned me, Mugman. I did. You warned me, it's Mugman. classic Cuphead. We've seen it before. This game has been on the radar of gamers for about five years. Something, Something like, like that. that. Absolutely yeah. insane. And he's finally here. And what a game it is. It was... What a game it is. I didn't... Do you know what? I thought it was going to be complete platforming. I've got to be honest. I thought it was going to be complete platforming. I actually platforming. did think it was a platforming game. We'd seen the bosses in videos, but yeah. I knew I wanted to play it. Therefore, I kind of ignored a lot of it. And yeah. it turns out it is, it's just a boss rush game. There's a couple of platforming levels in there, but they've been like tacked on. You can tell that yeah. at any time. It is a boss rush game with some of the most creative bosses I've it's seen in really any good. video game. Yeah, none of them was like alike either. And also the satisfaction and the, the ups and the downs we got from our play through they were high and they were low which is a good oh. thing because that satisfaction this game gives you once you actually overcome the challenges oh, in it yeah. is something else so let's have a little look we have do have a story somewhat but it's really an excuse to get us going what's our story pal you spin me a yarn i'm gonna spin you a yarn pledge so we're set on inkwell isle oh yeah so cuphead and mugman two fun loving kids with cups for heads. With cups for heads. What was the... Was that a giveaway in the title? <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> anyway, so they're just wandering around and they get told not to go to the Devil's Casino, but kids. Kids being kids. kids. Like Pinocchio, they went into the casino and they had started having a hot streak, mate. They did. They, they had did. a hot streak. Bam which may have been a bamboozle. It could have been. It could have been, been. Now, the devil saw this and he bet basically bet them the casino against their souls on their next roll. But it looks like from the truck from the intro that the devil gave them a loaded set of diamonds. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. So they begged and pleaded. Obviously, they lost. They begged and pleaded for the devil to not take their soul. To which the devil said, "Okay, you collect the souls of the people who are in debt to me, and I won't take your souls." Yeah, that's the premise. So basically, we're going to wander around in Quell Isle. Run into bosses, mm -hmm. kill them, get their soul contract, move on to the next one. Yep. That's what it's about. Because this game is 100% gameplay. Pretty oh, absolutely. Much. It's yeah. all about the gameplay. It's which a nice is just feel, fantastic. though. Like, even the, uh, I know that the gameplay and the style of the graphics, but the cutscenes and the style of the dialogue as well, it's very, very like 1930s style cartoon. I'm surprised they're not in trouble with Disney because there are some very clear Disney oh, grabs. Oh, the bodies. These woody of woodpeckers in there. Yeah. It looks like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> it looks like Mickey Mouse. And it's obviously done in the style of those cartoons, which aren't yeah. exclusively Disney, but it's. It's, the art style is what grabs everybody straight yeah, away. Absolutely. I mean, even if you're not sure what the game is, people drop into like the stream or whatever, and or they see a video and they go, "What is that?" Because mm -hmm. it just looks, it looks like a cartoon. No, it does. It looks even when you're playing it, it looks exactly like yeah. a cartoon, uh, which is what grabs people. And then you start to see that this game is hard. Oh, mate, I, I never in a, a month of game. Sundays would I have anticipated the difficulty. And it's well, such huge leaps as well. It's massive between leaps the in. aisles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we start. We've got four islands. Uh, that we go to four worlds and on there's about ten challenges usually two run and gun sections so let's get them out of the way they, yeah. they do feel tacked on um, they're like platform levels which I think some people are expecting so they added them in right. and what they've done is they've added them in for the sake of currency yes. so you earn some coins and then you go and f visit Mr. Pig and you can buy your upgrades from there <laughs> now what did you think of the upgrade system because I thought your starting kit for the most part was actually some of the best and the, some of the upgrades you can actually get initially mm -hmm were some of the best, and we never really needed much else. 
Um, I kind of feel yes. Well, let's let's talk about the actual gear that you can get then. So you can you can have two types of weapons, which are basically they vary very much. So like you fire from your finger, which is a simple laser of average damage. You can then get one that's basically a shotgun blast that's got no range and massive close range. You can get a charge shot because of how busy the game is. Um, it's actually um, a high risk, high reward charge shot. It does a lot of damage, but obviously with all the buttons that you're having to press. It's a problem. Then you get like a boomerang shot. All of them do different things. And I found that in terms of weapons, they all had massive roles in the games. Like, well, I say massive roles. They changed the difficulty dramatically. Yeah, if you had the right weapon for the right job, some of the levels were significantly easier. Yeah. And that was kind of like... Your f it, this was a game which I kind of didn't expect because it's a loadout, essentially. Mm -hmm. Is you'll go up against the boss and you'll be like, okay, what is this boss about? And then you might go back out of the screen, and we did this a few times, is drop back to the main screen to actually change our loadouts for this boss, yeah. which was very interesting. I would have liked to have seen that at the end of a try in the game without having a I would have liked to have been able to do it within sure. the system is just to change yeah. my loadout. So, because basically you get a retry, and the retries are instantaneous, which is fantastic. Yeah. So if you want to retry, it's just like, boom, it's like Super Meat Boy, straight mm -hmm. back in, and off you go again. So, yeah, so we get the two weapon slots. So that's, that's really nice as well, so it's not just changing your main weapon. The two weapon slots, because with them differing in their utility massively. That's a really nice thing to have. But also on top of that, we've got an X move, which is a special move, basically. Yeah, so you build up cards, like playing cards yeah, in the bottom Yeah, up to left. five. Yeah, you so can you have build five, up five cards. Um, and you can cast them per bar, kind of like Street Fighter. You can cast them per bar, or you can build them up to the top, and then you can cast your ultimate. Now, we unlocked two of them, I believe. Two out of three ultimates, yeah. So they yeah. have these extra side sections of the islands, which are mausoleums, mm -hmm. uh, which basically rely on the parry skill. So the parry skill is when you jump, if you press jump again at a perfect moment on a pink enemy or an, a projectile, then you will parry it, which gives you kind of a double jump, yep. also kills the projectile, and it gives you a full card. Yep. Uh, which is one of your EX moves. But you also build up your EX move by just attacking targets anyway. Mm -hmm. You'll build it up slowly. If you pull off a parry, then you will get a full one to charge up your weapon. But it's, again, everything in this game is high risk, high reward. Like, going for parries, because if you miss your parry, you don't hit the sweet spot, you'll take damage. You do. And you do not regenerate health in no, these I, levels. You can only get hit <laughs> three not. times in a level unless you spec for one of the third items, which is basically a passive trait or stat fix, like we, like I just said, then you start off with three heart pieces. Every hit, you'd lose one, and then obviously you die and have to reset if you lose the three. But then there's one where you can get an additional heart piece at the cost of damage. There's others where your dash actually puffs you out in a, like a, a cloud of smoke. Yeah, it makes you like a blink ability. Yep, and the actual movement between point A and B, you don't take damage. There's others where it will passively increase your card regeneration, that kind of thing as well. But I found like we was like you just like you said earlier is once I got the um, like the smoke teleport, the safe teleport kind of thing, I didn't want to use anything else because that got me yeah. out of so much trouble. But that's only the that's only the the trait cards, the weapons, and the actually no as well the ultimate ability, the two that we yeah unlocked. exactly. It seems like uh, for me because um, the shop is quite interesting because the shop gives you a choice of four items. Yeah. But that will not change until you purchase one of those four items, and mm -hmm. then it will be replaced by something else. So if you don't buy anything, you, you're gonna your your choices won't vary. You can't go to a different island, go to a different shop, and get a different set of options. Oh, it's, you yeah, have it's the to same buy your way through all the gear to get to the end stuff. And we did get to the point where we have stopped being replaced. We bought pretty much everything in the shop, mm -hmm. uh, but we were buying things to see what would come next. Yeah, like that's what I was doing. I was buying things to see what comes next because I did not want to. Uh, we had homing shot, which was really useful in some levels, mm -hmm. particularly the run and good levels, or if the boss has so much going on that the homing shot is going to do significantly more damage than you're trying to target. Certainly while you're learning it. Yeah. Um, and once you had them like set, and the shotgun blast came in pretty handy on a few occasions. Once you had them, I was like, well, I don't really want this. I do want to see what's next though. So I'm buying stuff. So you're buying stuff. for the sake of buying. Yeah, I would love to see something a little bit more interesting there so it's not a case of I, just, I don't want this, but I'm having to spend my currency that I've earned just to see what's going to come next. Yeah. Because I might get to the point, and I, I have a feeling this might be the case, is that once we buy everything, I'll know. Well, once I bought all this, I don't need to get any more. I don't want to do anything. But one, uh, that doesn't mean you can't really skip currency, although you can technically. You pick up the currency in the levels. I've got a feeling, though, that there is the exact amount of currency for the exact amount of items in the game. Considering Perhaps. each island's got two uh, running guns, and they each offer between three and five coins. So I'm assuming 
that you need to get all coins to unlock all items. Yeah, perhaps. We did find some hidden coins wandering around. There yeah. was a hidden coin behind a tree and things like that to pick up. And a guy gave us some coins for free to get us started. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the system. I mean, again, it's only like... It's like it's, although the weapon choice is definitely significant, and we found that to be pretty major. Again, it does come with this risk-reward. Everything in this game is risk-reward. You can do very, very, very extreme DPS yep. if you pull off, like, a really good parries. There's a definite high skill ceiling here mm -hmm. uh, that comes with it. Is If you do all the things that it gives you the option to do, you can do massive amounts of damage, uh, which speeds up the fight significantly, so maybe that risk is worth it if you think you're good enough. But if you get it wrong, not only do you not get the bonus damage, but you also take damage, and you can die very, very quickly. Like Absolutely. you can die in extreme, extremely quickly in this game. Uh, we didn't find ourselves doing the no reset too much. Uh, we did on a couple <laughs> of bosses. <laughs> I do want to mention this skill, uh, the the difficulty jump though. So I, Island One, I would consider basically a tutorial. And then you move to Island 2 relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we did a co-op playthrough and I did some single-player playthrough. Um, and then as soon as you hit the second island, good God, it just goes, right, Immediately. okay, you're into the game now. Yep. This is where we're going to hit you. Immediately. And it jump. was an enormous jump. It was the um, the clown in the theme park roller coaster. Yeah, our first boss on the second one. island was the roller coaster boss. Jaw dropper. It was a jaw dropper. <laughs> I loved the multi phase nature of pretty much every boss. Absolutely. Like, I think by the second island, every boss had five phases. Something like and that. And you, yeah. you, they give you this really cool progress bar where they show um, your, your, your progress through the level. So if most of it's just the boss, it'll show you how far you got through the boss. But it also has these flag markers, which indicate the phase changes. Yep. So on several occasions, we were like, God, this was tough. And then you look at the progress, it's like, okay, we're only in phase two of five. <laughs> and we have a significant amount to go, uh, which is pretty crazy. But it's not all run and gun. We got to fly some planes. We did. We did. Which and was a cool addition. I had no idea they were going to do that. Yeah. The Well, here's another thing as well. is A couple of the bosses like the uh, the Pyramid Bro. What, I can't remember what it was called. Jimmy, Jimmy the Great. Jimmy. The Jimmy the Great. Um, who was a genie. He had several things that he can do in phase one. Now yes. it's not like he will rotate between them, as in like in t in the in the initial phase. It's one ability that he will pick in phase one. I think there was three varieties. Yeah, there were swords, cats, gems, cats. I think that was it. That was yeah. That yeah, was I think bro. that was it. And but the thing, I think this is where we need to get to now is there is definitely some RNG to these bosses, mm -hmm. and that could frustrate some players because the satisfaction of beating the bosses is overwhelming. Like we were cheering. Uh, when we did it, but there is definitely some RNG and sometimes it makes it significantly easier if you get a certain pattern. Oh, absolutely. And uh, so if I think we found, I found, like, we had different ones, which was interesting, though, because I found the cats to be the worst. I felt that the cats were always yeah. everywhere I wanted to go, whereas swords I was fine with, like, and then vice versa. I was you found the swords hard, like but the cats versa, much yeah. easier. Uh, so that's going to come down to personal taste, but uh, we talked earlier is that your gunshots charge up your your primary your ex move, which does huge damage, uh, and also parrying does that. When I switch over single player, and we'll talk about the co-op single player shortly, what I did find is something that we felt was happening in co-op is that the bosses transition between all these phases is some sort of mixture of time and damage done. Yep, absolutely. That's as soon as I thought that I couldn't remove it purely on the grounds that I'd see. Some attempts where, for an example, being when we were doing the aircraft one, uh, later on we have to fight a bird, and you can switch between a kind of like a Gatling cannon or bombs, and obviously bombs you can only drop. And there was phases where we was both just peppering him with bombs, and he would transition in the same time as if we were both using the cannons. Absolutely, yeah. And I did confirm that this is the case when I did the single player playthrough is you uh, notice, and the, the best uh, the best signal that this is happening is the cards, because you only generate that by hitting the boss. Yep. I had skews of a full card, where I had, sometimes I would transition the boss from phase one to two, where there's not much going on, with two and a half cards, which means I've done two and a half cards worth of damage. Sometimes I had less than two. And then on extreme cases, I had over three. And that is a dramatic amount of difference in terms yeah. of what's going on there. So there is some sort of weird system there where they definitely... Because I think the animation is so good 
that they want to lock the bosses into doing certain animations and going oh, through certain a, they, RP. Yeah, like get you a full cycle. Yeah, exactly. To so, and it. it really skews off. So I think if they start an animation cycle, and that animation cycle might last quite a long time, is the phases get extended pretty dramatically. Um, that's what I saw anyway. And that might, again, be a little bit of frustration for people who find these games super tough. Is that it's a, It does have that variance, but at the same time, it keeps it fresh. Like, even the genie boss, which is one of, what, 40 bosses in this game, yeah. has all this variance just from phase one, and then it'll change over to phase two. We did another boss which could call constellations and, oh, and summon yeah, different bosses. Because yeah. uh, she turned into different bosses based on the constellations she summoned, and she summoned different bosses. Uh, all of them are manageable, though. Yep. I didn't really feel at any point that uh, when we died, it wasn't because we made an error that we could probably fix. There are certainly some occasions when you're in almost unwinnable scenarios. But, but that's, that's a series of HP, events. Yeah, that's like yeah. Your H, why your HP buffer's there. They clearly want you to be doing this without getting hit, but they know sometimes you're going to get hit. So <laughs> you've got that HP buffer there until you go to extreme mode where you can do that. And obviously you get ranked at the end of the levels. So if you get an HP bonus, you'll get an, an A-plus ranking yep. uh, for not getting hit. But there are some really nasty scenarios, but you can always feel like maybe I put myself there and <laughs> I shouldn't have been there in the first place. That's what I kind of got and I, I just got me more angry at myself for that yeah you've just blamed yourself because you're like is. I shouldn't be getting hit by this I shouldn't be getting hit by that yep. god damn this phase is easy compared to what we just did yep. which is all part of the fun because that's what's going to generate that drive to when you actually kill it to go yes yes we did it we did it uh, so we did a co-op playthrough now I did a single player playthrough after we finished our co-op playthrough mm -hmm. and the big question in our chat of course was what's what's more difficult is single player easier or is co-op mode uh, easier? Now, the pros of the co-op are that obviously there's two of you and you can res each other if you can reach the ghost. You have to perform a parry on the ghost. Now, the ghosts do float up, which means if you die near the top of the screen, you're gone. You're kind of out of there. That's kind of it. You're kind of game over. But you do get to play with your friends. And I have to say, for a start, co-op was way more fun to play. That without really? question. Oh, yeah. Co-op yeah. was way more interesting to play. The communication back and forth because we had to line up certain things and manage who's you're doing what and splitting jobs out and things like that. That was way more fun. Now, I'll say it now. In my opinion, co-op is significantly, and I'm not talking marginally, significantly more difficult. Significantly more difficult. Because the drawbacks of being a co-op are the bosses seemingly have, on every enemy, has twice the amount of HP. It certainly felt that. And the ads as well. And the ads. Every single enemy seems to have twice the amount of HP. Um, and... Honestly, the res thing comes with its own problems. Now, the, the next big thing I found in Corp is that the screen is massively more busy. Yeah. And that makes avoiding things really hard. There was a certain weapons that I couldn't use because it was confusing the pair of us with its animation. Yeah, your boomerang weapon spams around yeah, in circles. Yeah. And it just filled the screen. There was just too much. Because the animation is, uh, is beautiful, but it's also very, very busy. Mm -hmm. At some points, there's huge amounts of things going on. Uh, and then you mix in the fact that you not only have that and another player firing constantly, because you do constantly fire in this game, you're yep. constantly shooting your weapon pretty much, then it's just, it's so much busier than it is single player where it's just you and you can stop and you can chill and you can see everything. And also, you know enemies are coming for you. A big problem we had in, in co-op sometimes is the uh, bosses will look like they're targeting one person and then a bullet will come out and go completely yeah. the opposite way. But they'll give the visual of them targeting one of the people. You could be on the other sides of the screen. They could point his gun at you, but the bullet would come for me. Yeah, they'd literally come out of the back of yeah. the boss uh, to come and get you, which created all kinds of problems. And as I said, resing could be a problem because if someone dies, you obviously want to res them because of all the extra HP and stuff that you're dealing with, uh, is that puts you in danger. And in a game that kills you as quickly as this, that's a big problem. Mm -hmm. Because if you just, sometimes going for, if a parry can get you killed, going for somebody whose corpse is floating randomly in a sea of bullets, that's more dangerous than yeah. ever. Sometimes it's convenient, sometimes it's not. Um, well, the pros and cons then, your opinion, pal. Uh, I love the art style, straight off it's the bat. It's, it's such a knockback to like when I was a kid, like v obviously I wasn't a kid in the 30s, mm. but VHS tapes of classic cartoons and it just really captured all of it in terms of the motion, the dialogue, even the style of the bosses, the style of the attacks, absolutely everything. Uh, local court was fantastic though, worked perfectly. No problems at all. We ran into one issue which we overcame by just learning about it, which was uh, there's a boss where you have to stand, you have to transition between the ceiling and the floor. 
And the way you did oh, that by was this, by parrying yeah. an item in the middle of the room. This was in my cons, mate, actually. Oh, okay. I mean, let's just I mean, just to brush over the rest of my points for the pros in the conclusion is the fact that, like Mike said, the, the co-op was seamless. It was really good. You could obviously you could split tasks on boss mechanics, or you could just go balls to the wall. You could we there wasn't bosses, it wasn't all bosses where we split things, you know? Mm -hmm. We sometimes we did, sometimes we didn't. It just de depended on what the boss did. And we found it easier to do so, but everything felt unique in all the bosses. There wasn't this small similar things like in the um, in the bosses where you fight them in an aircraft, but there was so much variation in the bosses. Not in terms of mechanics, but in terms of backgrounds, in terms of art styles. It all felt all very very different all the time. I mean, one of them we were fighting a big clown, which uses a roller coaster as part of the fight, and then we're fighting two frogs that turn into a fruit machine. What, with boxing gloves? With Bo boxing gloves, gloves yeah. yeah. So the creativity these are all, Yeah, point. the creativity is like off the charts with this. The cons that, the only con, sorry, that I could have, and it's a very specific one, so that's a good thing for the game, is the fact that um, there's certain items in the game, like um, you have to parry into them, which is the jump and then jump again. These items sometimes need to be used quite fast, and in co-op, there is a small um, invisibility window where the item doesn't respond because someone's just used it. Yeah, so uh, what Andy's saying is there's an item in the middle of the room that you have to parry off and that will change your gravity to whether you're... Well, it actually, it actually, this is the prime example of it, but basically what we're saying is you can't parry the same thing back to back. Mm -hmm. And that is very frustrating when you're... Because you're obviously trying to transition to avoid hazards. If it's a level mechanic. Yeah, the level mechanic is you have to transition between the ceiling and the floor to avoid hazards. Um, so jumping, both of us jumping at the same time and parrying off the thing to swap like we should do. Like our instinct was that's what we should be doing now. Yeah. Uh, doesn't work. One of you will get the parry. The other person will just hit nothing. Uh, even though the parry was perfect because the item is on cooldown almost mm -hmm. and can't be used again. Although it doesn't visually show you that. There's nothing visually in the game to say you can't parry this. Yeah. Uh, it just doesn't work and you fall back down. And that caused a couple of deaths. And um, we did work around it, but I think that should be allowed. You should be able to parry the same thing at the same time. Especially if you've got two good players. You don't want one of you, or both of you, fighting for parries each of the time. No. If you're both capable of pulling off the parry, then go for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that should be how it works, in my opinion. Another thing that I thought was a bit of a con is the controls. I really dislike the standard control scheme. Oh, what they set you out with, yeah. Yeah, so the standard, we used Xbox 360 controllers for PC. Uh, the standard control scheme comes with B, uh, which is the right sort of D-pad of buttons, uh, as the shoot button. Now, you're holding this down constantly. Why that wasn't bound to a trigger, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Because you're, ne you're very, very rarely letting go of the fire button. Yeah. But you're using your thumb for things like evades, for jumping. Uh, for using your special attacks. All these things are being done there. So why they did that is a little bit of a weird one for me. So we re we both rebound that, I think, to yeah. trigger uh, very, very quickly. Other than that, <laughs> it can cause rage. Lots of rage. We did. <laughs> Do you know something? I'll tell you what. We did really, really well. In terms of? In terms of we didn't fall out once. No, I don't think so. Because we were having fun at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah, but I, I think I, that's, each of us that's... went through periods of like, I'm bad now. <laughs> now I, no, you're yeah. bad. Now I'm bad again. I was having that much fun with the game. And with it being like very short boss fights, I didn't feel any sort of rage towards it. Which no, is very not really. Strange. Again, because you can find your own mistakes in there sometimes, which yeah. is the point. And Honestly, it's just one of those games where you're not... But I never got even that boss that took us an hour, which I said was the longest. I wasn't bored of the boss. I wasn't it, like, it, this is it's boring. It's driving to push further. Yeah, it wasn't like, God, oh, I'm sick of this, I'm sick of that. Each phase was interesting. It kept me engaged each time. And usually it was... Uh, we actually thought, and I, I think we were both right here, is that we'd streamed for quite a while. So when we hit that boss, it wasn't actually the most difficult boss we'd fought. Nope. I don't think it was at all. Uh, in fact, on a single player, I two-shot it. Oh, it was um, the last boss that we did as yeah, well. Yeah, it was the last boss we did. We are just feeling a bit tired because this game is kind, kind of mentally tiring mm -hmm. because it, there's so much going on, so much avoidance to be done. And interestingly enough, I actually, as when we finished streaming, I just checked out where the speedrunners are up to because this game is prime for speedrunning. <laughs> um, and they've got it down to like 30 minutes. Wow. But the guy couldn't get past the first level. 
because he was tired. It was just like it needs. He, you have to respect every level of this game because it's going to screw you up. Yeah. And he was just dying on the very first level, and he was, and uh, he just said, "I'm just, I can't. My brain's gone. Like this is this needs focus. It needs full attention for a while. And after a few hours, you're pretty drained. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're pretty drained after you've played it, and you're like, oh, okay, I can need a little break. But you can now. feel yourself lose that edge as well as you come to the tail end of it. You need to be sharp all the time because you Absolutely. have to respond so quickly. But our conclusion, I think, what a wonderful game. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. I'm loved gonna it. finish it. I'm really looking forward to seeing what lies towards the end of this one because we played uh, we we actually got to 65 percent we did yeah we did 65 percent of the game up to there but we bought nearly everything in the shop and i think it was a case of working through and no doubt the boss is getting significantly harder do you want a little easter egg to finish up mate go on then a little cliffhanger what there's two endings dun 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 got your soul didn't get your soul do i win do i win see you I'm later so everybody <laughs> bye bye I don't think you put enough jaw in that walk then, mate. <laughs> Lack of jaw. Just saying, mate. I had a swing in my hand. I could have had, had a nice swing. little jaw. You know what? I didn't that. see it. I bet it's in there. It's a guy on a piano giving it all that from family. But guys. looking around. Yeah. Cuphead! What a fantastic <laughs> game! Hard. So oh, hard. But the um, it's not a, it's not a ramp of difficulty. It's like steps. Yeah, it's, it's like insane. steps. insane. And after playing through some of the further bosses, like, I haven't finished it yet. I am going to finish it. Um, it gets worse. It just gets so much worse. But... Again, that satisfaction. Really hard in any modern day game to get that satisfaction when you overcome it. It oh, makes you want to like yeah. high five yeah. somebody or just. <laughs> so if you're into that kind of thing, you're not going to find a better game at the moment anywhere that gives you that kind of fun. And uh, plus, it's boss rushes. It's just one after the other after the other. You overcome one challenge, you're right into the next. <laughs> Pretty good. So if you enjoyed that, check out the link down below, which is the VOD of me and him getting smashed up for an hour uh, by a genie. By a dragon, oh, yeah. by sweets, by a waffle. By a clown. I hate that cupcake. I hate <laughs> that cupcake. We'll see you again. I'm joking. I hate that cupcake. It's a jerk. That's cupcake, is that, mate? Just saying.